thousand dollars right there. I see it. <laughs> we're showing bank accounts, okay? What we're we talking about, Delmar? Three hundred sixty-one thousand dollars. About COVID nineteen. And I'll literally show you the check right here, fifty-five thousand. This is actually closed. Money is actually there. It's about fifty-one thousand dollars gross. You have over a hundred grand projected profit to close. Oh, I got another deal. I forgot. It can't get more realer than that, right? I'm gonna flip the paper recession proof. I have an amazing special guest with me today. Uh, this is Romy, and she is a business lawyer and, uh, to entrepreneurs, startup, uh, small businesses, and foreign investors. And her, she is one of the founders of her law firm. Her practice primarily focuses and, and is uh, centered around helping domestic and international business transactions. And so I thought, why not have her jump on here, uh, chat with me for a few, to answer some of the frequently asked questions that uh, I get, our coaches get about doing business in America. We have a lot of students from all over the world, from the UK to Canada, to South America, to South Africa, uh, the Caribbean, Caribbean and, and so forth. So I wanted to get Romy on here to talk about the process of setting up a foreign US LLC in America, what that looks like, and some things that you should be concerned about uh, when going through that process. And also to demystify some of the myths about that process as well. And she's also written a book, by the way, on this topic, starting a business in the US as a foreigner. So again, I couldn't think of anyone better, an expert like Romy to help us talk through this process and uh, you know, see some of the pros and cons of doing business in America. So Romy, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm doing amazing. So I'm glad you're on here. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's a privilege and honor to be able to chat with you real quick. And I know this is going to be great value uh, for our students within our community as well. So I wanted you to first start off by sharing a little bit about you, your background, and uh, let us know what you're doing right now and also the name of your company because I didn't want to mess up the pronunciation of it. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So my name is Romy Jurado. I am the founder of Jurado and Farshin. We are a law firm here in Miami, Florida, but we help clients throughout the United States in things such as business formations, immigration, real estate with focus in Florida. And we also do probate, litigation, trademarks and copyrights. We also do federally. Um, my journey has been as an entrepreneur. I founded this law firm. I also founded a title company that where we provide real estate closing service throughout Florida. And also another nonprofit is called Caterney Sapa, where we raise funds in order to spay and neuter homeless cats. Um, as a business lawyer, I have helped many, 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 many clients, whether locally or actually a lot of them internationally. And think because of technology, we're able to help our clients even if we don't see them in person. Um, so this is why I love, you know, technology. And now with what happened with COVID, it didn't stop our business. It actually increased our business because we were already set up to do everything virtually. I have clients that I never meet or I meet them when I already obtain a visa for them and they're here investing. So it just depends on that. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about a little bit about what it is to open up a company as a foreigner. It's not something that is difficult. It's just something that is different for uh, from opening it up as a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. So there's some things to look out for that hopefully with my experience, I'm going to be able to walk you through so that you don't have any pitfalls. Amazing. Amazing. And, and I, I love, you know, I, I was sharing recently that COVID has actually helped in many ways uh, with innovation when it comes to technology and, and doing things virtually. Yes. It's, also, it's also helped people uh, be more receptive and open-minded to doing business and trans transacting business virtually as well. And so what, what we teach is how to do deals in America completely virtually, uh, which means because of technology and resources again, uh, which means you can now do it from the comfort of your own home or from anywhere in the world. And that's why we have you on here, Romy, is to, to help and support our clients that are doing this business, doing deals in America. We're not teaching how to do deals in any other country. We're teaching them how to do deals in America. But because you can do it virtually now, it means you can do it from anywhere in the world. But because of that, there's some additional steps that our foreign investors, our foreign clients and students have to go through. And so I wanted you to just talk through that process of what do they have to go through, our foreign clients, what do they have to go through to set up a foreign U.S. LLC? What's the process? 
Sure. So we will form the foreign, you know, the, sorry, the LLC for the foreigner. We can, they can choose what state they want to form it in. I usually recommend to form it in the state that you're going to be buying real estate. However, nowadays you can buy real estate anywhere in the United States. So it just depends what the client prefers. We are forming a lot of companies in Florida. We're forming a lot of companies in Delaware because it's more, um, it's, there's some certain level of anonymity. When dealing with foreigners, I have come to learn that they value anonymity a lot, not because they're hiding something, but because they don't want people in their country to find out what assets they have in the United States and then be subject to kidnapping or God knows what else happens, you know, it happens in our countries. So for that, Delaware is actually a great state where you can incorporate and it's not public who is the owner. There are certain ways to you safeguard anonymity in other states too. It's just a Delaware, it's more, it's easier, I guess. Um, so as a foreigner, we would go and set up your company in one of the states. And that is a process that maybe takes about, I would say, three to four days, depending on the state, to set up the actual company itself. What takes a while, it's going to be obtaining the tax ID of the company. Every company needs a tax ID. Just like people in the United States have a social security number, companies have something called EIN, Federal Employment Identification Number, you should refer to as tax ID. And it's very simple for a US person to obtain one. We can do it the same day after we form the company because they have a social security number. For a foreigner, it's not the same. For a foreigner, it's going to, before, before COVID, it used to take, I would say, a month, a month and a half. Now it's taking around three months. So that's one of the first things we do as soon as the company is formed, we file for the tax ID. And literally we have our team is calling the IRS every, every other day to see if they have uh, given the tax ID to that company because it just takes that long. So meanwhile, it doesn't mean you don't have a company, your company is formed, but you're not going to be able to open up a bank account until you have the tax ID. We can prepare your corporate documents. We can have all of that ready, but you won't be able to open up a bank account until you have your tax ID of the company. We have been able to help our clients whose companies we form introduce them to the banks, different banks that we work with in order to be able to open up their U.S. bank account, either personal or for the company, without them being here physically, you know, because of COVID, it's not possible sometimes. You won't be able to do this at any regular bank because they want to see you personally. We have been able to help our clients, especially the Florida clients, do that at different banks that we work with because I vouch for the client and so forth. So that I would say the hardest part of setting up your business, it's going to be obtaining the tax ID. It's not that it's hard for you because we are the ones doing the work. It's just going to take some time. Now, deciding the structure is important because, for example, if you're a foreigner and you buy a property in your own name, now you're subject to FERPTA. FERPTA is a withholding tax, where at the time that you sell the property, whoever the title company is, it's going to have to send 15% to the IRS, 50% of the value of the whole property, not of the profits that you're making, but of the whole property. And that's a really bad thing because think about it. You bought an apartment for 300,000, you're selling it for 400. I'm just giving you numbers here. You would think you're gonna pay taxes only on that $100,000 gain, but in reality, here comes a closing statement. It's gonna save 15% of 400,000 that you have to send to the IRS. Nobody wants that. So one way to avoid that is to have the property be owned by a uh, company, not just any company. If you form a single member LLC, you're still going to be subject to FERPTA, okay? However, if the single member LLC is taxed as a corporation, you may not be subject to FERPTA. Also, if you form an LLC and it has two members, you may not be subject to FERPTA as long as you have a tax ID. So these are important things to discuss before you form the company. It's not just, okay, let me just form an LLC. No, because now you're still gonna be subject to FERPTA, 50%, 15% withholding, and it's not gonna make financial sense for you. The other thing that foreign space that they may not think about is at the time of death. Basically, when you buy a property in your own name and you go to heaven, assuming you believe in heaven, I do, then your heirs are going to have to pay a 40% state tax, 40% of the value of the property at the time of your death. So now of what you bought it, let's say you bought it for 100,000 and when you die, it's worth 500,000, your heirs are going to have to pay 40% of 500,000. Foreigners only have an exemption of, I believe, 63,000. So only the 63,000 or 500,000 is going to be exempt and then you have to pay state tax on the rest. Whereas us, US people, we have an exemption of five point something million. 
So that is why it's important not to put property in your own name as a foreigner, because one, you're going to be subject to FERPTA, two, you're going to be subject to state tax, and lastly, you're going to be subject, like everybody else is, to liability. And when you put a property in your own name, somebody falls in the property, now they can not only recover with the asset of the property, now they could also come and sue you personally because you own the property personally. So that applies same for US people as foreigners. So these are some considerations to have in order to determine, hey, you know what? I should, I should invest money in forming a company in order to avoid liability as a foreigner, FERPTA, and the state tax uh, that you would be subject to. So then once a foreigner decides, yes, I want to put the property in an LLC, which type, how do I do it? There's different ways. You know, if you don't want to be subject to the state tax, then maybe we form an LLC to own the property in the United States, but then maybe the owner of the LLC, it's not going to be you personally. It's going to be a foreign company that you may own in your own country, or it might be a company that we form for you, like a Nevis company or something like that. Why? Because companies don't die. So if you have the LLC and you own it in your own name, the LLC, and if you die, now those shares or those membership interests are going to be subject to state tax. Whereas if the LLC or corp is owned by a foreign corporation and that corporation, you know, the United States doesn't have any control of the foreign corporation, then if you die, it's all going to be determined however you have that corporation set up. But your asset here in the United States, whether it be owned by an LLC or a corporation, it's not going to be subject to that state tax. So that's very important to determine. Now, a lot of people get confused and they're like, well, Romy, I am, let's say, from Peru. That's where I'm from. I have all my state planning done here. I've already determined everything, how my assets are going to be um, divided. And my attorney told me, Peruvian attorney, that I'm not going to be subject to anything in the United States because I'm not a U.S. citizen nor a tax resident. That's incorrect. If you have property in the United States, and that property has to go through a process called probate when you die, even though you're not a US citizen, you're not a US tax resident, that property is gonna have to be probated here in the United States, wherever state that property is at. So you need to be really careful to structure that appropriately. Otherwise you're gonna be paying for, or your state's gonna be paying for probate abroad and that judge has no jurisdiction in the property here. So you're still gonna have to open up a probate state here. It's gonna be supplementary to what you did over there, but you're still gonna have to deal with that headache and nobody wants to deal with that headache. Hence why we do this planning, depending on what the client needs to set up a US uh, company or LLC, corporation, whatever it might be. We can help you make that process simple. We do this every day, all day. Um, we're able to do it remotely, so I don't have to meet with you personally. In fact, I don't want to meet with you personally right now because of Corona. We're doing everything remotely. And then we will just give you what you need for you to open up the bank account yourself. If you come to the United States or if you have a setup where they'll help you open it virtually, we can give you everything that you need to go and open up that bank account. Now, we also provide additional services, as I mentioned, such as closing, trademarks, visas, if you want to think about it in the future. But when it pertains to this, what I'm here to talk to you about is to let you know that, yes, we can help you open up your company, even though you're not a U.S. citizen or tax resident or have a visa. A lot of people have the misconception that, oh, I cannot buy real estate. I cannot form a company unless I have a visitor's visa or some type of visa to the United States. That's not correct. We have opened up companies for clients that have no visa. In fact, they're hiring me to get a visa, but we need to find form the company first. So you're able to form a company without a visa. You're able to buy real estate without a visa. I mean, I, that's your choice if you want to buy without looking at it. That's your decision. It's a business decision. Legally, you are able to do it. So those are some misconceptions people have. And I'm just here to let you know that it's not a problem. We can do all of that remotely. That's amazing. That was actually going to be one of the questions because I asked uh, some of our students within our community uh, to send me questions prior to this interview, just so I can, you know, have you answer the questions for them. Because there's every class that we do, these questions come up time and time again, and and I share with them the process. But I wanted an expert this time to 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 uh, to give the answers from a proven uh, attorney and and, uh, and answer these questions instead. So. So I have some questions here, and one of the questions was what you just talked about. Um, do I need a green card or a visa to be able to start an LLC? Because it seems like that's a big misconception that's out there that you need to have that. Another one was, uh, do I can I have the address for my U.S. company be in another country? And you just shared that as well. You can have a foreign uh, corporation if you have, for example, if someone has a corporation already in their home country that entity can be the owner or the managing member of the U.S. 
uh, corporation. Is that correct? Is that what you? That is correct. So the, your mailing address can be in a foreign, you know, anywhere, any country or any other state that you want. But every state, it's going to require you to have a register agent. I will serve as your register agent in the state of Florida. If we form your company in any other state, I will be the one to coordinate and hire the register agent so that I can properly form your company. So you're required to have a register agent as a service that you paid for, but you don't need to have a physical address in the United States in order to form a company. You can have your foreign address. What are the benefits of a registered agent for, for those that may not know what a registered agent even so is? So basically it's, it's the person or company that receives any communication from the state because the state wants to be able to find you. Now, the reason why it's required may not be a benefit for you, but it's the reason why also is because if somebody's going to sue you, they don't want to go chase you in whatever country you're at. If you form a company, they want to be able to serve the address of the register agent so that the lawsuit gets started. That is the reason, one of the reasons why you are required to have a register agent in the state where you're forming the company. Awesome. And can someone that has a U.S. corporation uh, in America, can they work here because they have a corporation without the visa or they have to have the visa before they can do any business here or, or, or work for their company here? So you can be a business owner and own as many businesses as you want in the United States. What you cannot do is legally work physically in the United States. So for example, if you have an LLC in the United States and you're in your country working in your country, that shouldn't be a problem, you know? But if you are in the United States working for that company, that's a problem because then you need a work or investment visa, which we can help you obtain. So it's very important to, to Keep that in mind. You know, you're, you can work for your company if you're outside of the United States, but you cannot work for that company within the United States would have, without having a valid work visa. And uh, it's very important to never mention the word, word work when you're coming to the United States because it, it's a violation of your immigration status to come to the United States to work when you don't have a work visa. They're very, very picky about that. If you plan to work in the United States, we can help you obtain the right visa so that you can do it with no problem. That was a great gem and tip right there. And I'm glad this person asked that question because I'm sure others may not have thought that. And uh, this is something that they need to be aware of as well. Now, you mentioned something earlier that you were able to help your clients set up bank accounts um, especially the clients that are in Florida set up bank accounts because some banks want to see you physically in person before you open up the account. However, you have relationships with uh, banks where you can set up accounts for your clients virtually. And so in, on that note, this question here is on that specifically as well. Does the bank account need to be opened in the same state that the LLC was created in? It's going to be up to the bank. I have banks that will require for the LLC to either be formed in the state where the bank is or to qualify, to be qualified to do business in the state where the bank is. And that is something that we can help with as well. Let's say you already form your company in another state, but your bank is in Florida, we're able to qualify your, it's called foreign LLC, even though it's within the United States, we can qualify your foreign LLC from that other state to do business in Florida and then be able to help you obtain a bank account but it's up to the bank. You mentioned different states. Where should someone consider send, setting up their LLC if doing business here? It depends on where they're buying the property. Usually I advise clients to buy the LLC wherever they're acquiring property. Also, I advise clients to, depending on what they're doing with the property, in order to limit the liability, to have one LLC per property, um, if, especially if they're renting it out. Some, sometimes clients tell me, well, that's a little too expensive. And of course I understand that. So maybe put two properties or three max on an LLC, but don't put like your whole portfolio in one LLC because now, you know, if somebody falls ill in one of your properties, they can go and sue the LLC and attach all of the other assets it owns. So you're not really gonna get that liability protection. Absolutely. And what about wholesaling specifically? So when it comes to real estate wholesaling, uh, these investors aren't actually buying the property. They're just really selling their equitable interest in the property, the contract to a third party. And so because the business in many ways is done virtually and they don't need a physical office or location in a particular state, 
Um, do you recommend any state in particular um, to set up an LLC in? If it's because of anonymity, then I would recommend Delaware because in Delaware, it won't be public who the manager or members are. If you don't care about that, then I would recommend Florida because I can help you set up your bank account if you're not here physically. Other than that, it's really up to you. You know, uh, you want to form an estate where you're not going to have any type of additional taxation. Florida is one of those states. So you, it might be a beneficial state for you to form. And right now, everybody's coming to Florida because of our good economic uh, situation. Even though with COVID and everything, we're still thriving. So I would actually recommend Florida. I love Florida. I've been in Florida for 20 years. <laughs> Florida, actually, is it? No, actually 15 years. I've been here for 15 years. So I love Florida. Um and, and I totally agree with that, uh, Romy. Now, next question here I have is, um, can you set up most of this stuff up virtually? You've, been, you've already been talking about this, but the question here is, can you set everything up virtually without seeing me in person? Um, can I set up my LLC bank account, get my physical US address, uh, which is another item that may be needed, not for the LLC, but for other services, maybe the opening up the bank account. Can I do all of that completely virtually? Yes, yes, it can be done virtually. We have done it virtually with no problem. We're also able to do remote online notarizations. And that's something that we became, uh, we, uh, basically because of COVID, we're like, and the law was recently passed in Florida. So we're able to notarize documents for our clients wherever they are. And that's one of the reasons why the bank is able to open up the accounts for our clients because we're able to notarize their ID documents, thus attest to their veracity and who they are. And then the bank has that security to open up their bank account just by looking at them through video. And that is all done remotely. Isn't technology great? I I literally did a, a, a virtual notary as well just a couple of weeks ago for a service that I signed up for. It's a virtual mail mailing service. Mm -hmm. And they had to verify my identity and other things. I just had to send them some documents. I scanned it on my phone or my computer, send it to them. And I jumped on a call, a remote call, just like we're doing right now, a Zoom call. And uh, they verified my face and my documents. And it was they notarized my, my stuff right there on the spot. So, again, technology has advanced so much that it allows us to now do things like this uh, from anywhere in the world. So it's pretty cool. It is. Uh, Absolutely. Now, next question here is specifically about real estate. You mentioned that you own a title company as well, so this is great. Um, when I close a deal in America, whether it's a physical property that I'm buying or a property that I'm wholesaling, and I'm getting paid through the title company, what does that process look like? How, how do I get paid? How is the money sent to me? Um, are there any withholdings, which you touched on earlier? Uh, so that's what this person is asking here. How do I get paid? Um, and is any money held back from my proceeds when doing a wholesale deal or real estate transaction? I can only speak for what we do in our firm because I don't know how other other um, title companies or law firms do it. But in our firm, if there is somebody getting money because of a wholesaling deal, their name or their company name will appear in the closing statement and it will say, you know, whatever, $10,000, $15,000 assignment fee. And then we either wire it or send a check and we don't withhold anything from it because that's just their fee that are getting paid. Now, do you have tax liability on that gain that you would need to speak to an accountant and discuss your particular situation and what your tax uh, implications will be every, you know, do you have state tax? I don't know. You need to speak to an accountant for that. That was actually the next question. What about taxes? Do you have to file annual taxes and what is that process like? Yeah, they need to speak to an accountant. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so I think that was it. I mean, this is a pretty simple, straightforward process. Um, from our conversation here, it seems like there's really just, just like we talk about, there's just a few things that you have to set up is a uh, U.S. corporation. Uh, you have to get a physical address, uh, which will help you open up your U.S. bank account. And once those things are set up, uh, you're, you're on your way and you're able to start doing business in America, buying deals or wholesaling deals in America. And, uh, you know, start and launch your business that way. And you don't have to have a green card. You don't have to have a visa. None of those limitations matter. You're basically, it sounds like you're basically going through the same process in many ways, except with the EIN part. You're going through the same process as any U.S. citizen would have to go through to set up a, uh, an, a corporation, uh, bank account, et cetera. Is that correct? So the difference is you can do all those things as long as you're outside of America. 
if you're inside of America, you need a work visa to work in your business. So it's very important to make that distinction because I don't want people to lose their visa status for saying, yeah, I have a wholesaling business and I'm doing this and that in the United States. And then you don't have a work visa that's going to create a problem. So as a foreigner, you can do all those things if you're outside of America. And then if you're inside of America, you really can't do those things unless you have a work visa. That's the main difference. That's why I have you on here. That's a great, thanks for clarifying that part for me. And uh, how, do, how does someone reach you? If they wanna talk to you more or get some of your uh, help, some further help and assistance or some consultation with your company or even do business with your company, how, what's the best way for someone to reach out to you? They can email me or call me. My email is Romy, R-O-M-Y, at J as in justice, F as in Frank, lawfirm.com, L-A-W-F-I-R-M.com. They can call me if they want via WhatsApp. Our WhatsApp number is plus one, three oh five nine two one zero four four zero. They could also just Google me, Romy, R-O-M-Y, last name, J-U-R-A-D-O, and I'm sure they're going to find me and they can find all my social media and everything else. I'm all over the place. So they, could, they just need to get a hold of me and then it will be delighted to assist them. Awesome. And that's also how we connected as well, social media. So thank you so much, Romy. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, taking time out to hop on here with me to share this awesome uh, information with our clients, with our students. And uh, I'm sure that you'll probably get some uh, some uh, people reaching out to you for this as well, for some additional help and support. So thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. And uh, have a great day. Thank you, Dalmar. Thank you for everything. Bye, everybody. Thank you. All right, take care now.